And so then, so, there, there, so there, there, there's gossip. I mean, uh, verbosity. Then there's gossip. Uh, gossip betrays confidence. It separates close friends. Without a fire, without, a, without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. What happens is, when we start feeling like we've been done wrong and we want to make sure that people are on our side, not their side, so we go and tell them just how bad we had. And then another person goes and says, you know, that's, that's really bad. Let me tell somebody else. Let me tell somebody else. Let me tell about somebody else. You know, uh, I used to hear years ago back in the Church of God, they said it was, you know, you said it was uh, 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 three means of communication, telegraph, telephone, tell a woman. You remember hearing that joke from way on back? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is this one of the times where I should have kept my mouth shut? Okay, look. I changed it. Ladies, I changed it. I changed it. Here's how I changed it. Telegraph, telephone, tell a church member. <laughs> and they'll go out and tell everybody. And they'll, everybody outside will know more about your church than you do. And they know they're not spiritual. And they can tell everybody else how it's going to be. And so, so gossip's terrible. All right? And then, then there is slander. Slander, of course, uh, is where we get the word blasphemia. It's, it's blasphemia in the Greek. That's where we get the word blaspheme, and it can be toward God or it can be toward others. The devil's name is di uh, diabolos in the Greek, which means slander or false accuser. Revelation 12 and 10 says the accuser of the brethren. The evil tongue slays three, the slanderer, the slandered, and the listener. Wow. You know, I, I heard a guy say, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. And he says, I can't have already told you more than I heard. <laughs> All right. All right. Get ready. We, we, yeah, I, I know these are, these are not going to be so fun, but the ones that will be fun are coming up. Okay? So, so let's get through the, let's wait through the, through the tough stuff here. Judgment. Did you know that we're not qualified to judge people? We are to, we are fruit inspectors. We are to see fruit and know if this guy here, if he's living the life, then I know I want to be around him. If he's not living the life, I don't necessarily need to be around him. Uh, I can, uh, God says that we can discern. But it tells us never to judge. The difference in discernment and judgment, we talked about it a couple of uh, Tuesday nights ago. Discernment is, I look at the fruit, and I can tell that if that's actually an apple tree, and it says he's an apple tree, but if he's bearing cherries, he's not an apple tree. I can discern. All right? But judgment is when you actually pass judgment, they're nothing, they're no good, they're sorry, they'll never be anything. That's judgment. You know what? We don't know all the facts about anyone's life or situation. We base our judgment on speculation, assumption, and often hearsay. Think about it. That's powerful. The law of God, that's why the law of God says everything should be established between two or, or, or three witnesses. You know, a vacuum salesman appeared at the door of an old lady's cottage and without allowing the woman to even speak, rushed into the living room. He was doing that uh, verbosity. He went right in the living room and threw a large bag of dirt all over her clean carpet. And he said, if this new vacuum cleaner doesn't pick up every bit of dirt, that I just threw down, I'll eat every speck of that dirt. The woman, the woman who by this time was losing her patience said, Sir, if I had enough money to buy that thing, I would have paid my electricity bill before they cut it off. Now, which would you prefer, a spoon, a knife, or a fork? <laughs> You'll get it. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. We're, we're moving, moving on. I know this is not, these, aren't, these aren't the favorite ones to be around. So, so, so of course, criticism. You know, uh, uh, too many times we're critical of people. And it's unhealthy. Criticism tears down instead of building up. It's okay to, to do positive reinforcement and somebody and, and actually give me something positive. I even ask people, all right, all right, I need, I need you to, crit to critique it. Critique and criticism is two different things. To critique it, I'm asking you, tell me what you think. How did it work? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? That's healthy. That's positive. But criticism tears down instead of building up. Uh, a guy came to his pastor and said, Reverend, I, Reverend, I only have one talent. The pastor said, what's your talent? The man said, I have the gift of criticism. The pastor was wise and replied, the Bible says that the guy who only had one talent went out and buried it. Maybe that's what you ought to do with yours. <laughs> <laughs> So, criticism, complaints. Uh, complaining can be, become a very bad habit. We're told to do everything without complaining and arguing. And, and then, of course, there's anger. The Bible says to be angry but sin not because anger itself can lead us to sin if it's not addressed. Anger words can be caused by either a quick outburst or deep-seated 
pent up feelings. And what I've decided is, and I've learned is usually if somebody goes off on me, it usually isn't me. I'm going to help y'all. If somebody's gone off on you lately, just remember, usually it's not you. They've had all they can take and you were the last straw. Okay? So they may be attacking you, but they're actually attacking somebody else. And you just have to be the one. That last drop in that bucket before we out. And then, of course, uh, there, there's filthy language. Uh, Colossians 3 and 8 tells us to watch out for profane words. And profanity comes from two bad words, pro, in front of or outside of, and phantom, which is temple. So profanity is speech unworthy and unfit for the holy place. Wow. Wow. So watch how you talk. What you say. And then deceit. Do not lie to each other. You shall not give false testimony. The biggest and the worst one for the child of God is coming up right now. And that is doubt. Do you know that whenever you begin to doubt, you waver, and you waver between faith and doubt, you create instability in your life. There's a lot of Christians that have an unstable Christian life because they are wavering between faith and doubt. It brings fear. It brings confusion. It brings anger. So here we go. I'm, I'm trying to hurry up. Here we go. Ready? Watch this. How do I talk? I want you to remember this formula. Matter of fact, I, I should have made this formula and brought it to you and had it out there too. Think. Before you speak, think. Anybody ever said think before you speak? You know what that word think means? T. Is it true? Before I speak, is it true? Do I know it's true? I had somebody tell me one time, it was one church member years ago, one church member talking about another church member, and they said, I know for a fact. And that's how they said it. I know for a fact. <laughs> I said, really? I said, uh, what you talking about? Something very private. Were you in there? And they said, no. I said, did you actually see it? They said, no. I said, were you even around them when this happened? They said, no. I said, then how do you know it for a fact? And they said, point well taken. <laughs> Number one is the truth. Is it helpful? Is me talking about it going to help or hurt? Who am I helping, me or helping them? Number I or I, is it inspiring? N, is it even necessary? And K, is it kind? So here we go. We're getting ready to talk about how life gives us. See the stork? Bring a little baby. Amen. That was an awful big stork brought me. <laughs> Amen. Had to use two storks to bring B.C. Okay. Express positive. Constructive. Speech. So here we go. Get ready. This, this is good stuff. I told you we're going to end on the positive note. Alright? John 6, 63 says, The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. And then 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, talking about love, is a model of how to speak words that bring life. So here we go. Get ready. If you want to turn the table on your tongue, watch this. First, speak words of faith. Communicate in ways that inspire faith in God. And start talking positive to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Start, start, you know, I don't need to necessarily uh, beat up on that person. That person's having a hard enough time as it is. You know, I, I got really upset one time with one of DC's coaches. And and uh, I really actually did, I, I, you know, because I'm a parent too, I didn't get very Christ-like, I have to admit. I apologize to the guy later. But I remember when the first time I was zeroing in to get to talk to him, I was really upset. And as I started watching, I was getting a good talk to this coach. He had two little girls that I'd never seen, his girls, come up and start loving on him. And he picked them up and he loved on them and he kissed both of them. And he put them down. And his wife came up and she put her arm around him. And then all of a sudden, he went from being a coach to being a man. And all of a sudden, I saw things again. And it even affected the way I talked. So I spoke words of faith, not words of anger. All right? Then, words of hope. Communicate in ways that bring encouragement, enthusiasm, optimism. Believe the best about situations and people. You know, there's certain people in your life, you will always give them the benefit of the doubt. Think about it. I hear people talk about certain people. Well, they really didn't mean that. Or they're having a bad day. And there's certain people that they in their life that they never give them the benefit of the doubt. Learn to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Just until you find out different. 
But it means that things can change for the better because God, with God, all things are possible. All right? Speak words of love. The greatest of all virtues is love. Paul describes love in the passage of 1 Corinthians 13 uh, with, with kind of a words. Watch. When you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, instead of putting love is, put speak words that far. <coughs> Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's uh, go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Get your Bible out. 1 Corinthians 13. We're closing. 1 Corinthians. Y'all go ahead and start thinking about some good, good music here. 1 Corinthians 13. It says, I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love. Uh, I become a sounding brass and tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand it all, and have all faith that I can move mountains and have not charity, I have nothing. Okay, so watch this. And though I bestow all my gifts to feed the poor, and though I give a body to be burned and have not love, it probably nothing. Now, now watch this. I want y'all to say this with me. Instead of charity or love, I want you to say my speech, okay? My speech suffereth long. My speech is kind. My speech is not. My speech boneth not itself. My speech is not puffed up. My speech does not behave itself unseemly. My speech does not seek her own. My speech is not easy to provoke. My speech thinketh no evil. My speech rejoiceth not in iniquity. My speech rejoiceth in the truth. My speech beareth all things. My speech believeth all things. My speech hopes all things. My speech endures all things. My speech never fails because my speech is backed by God's Word. Wow. Wow, that's powerful. That's some powerful, powerful stuff. You know, and I'm closing. I want you to think about this. I wrote this all down. Just, I just want you to see this. I want you to read this. Consider the promise and the caution. Those that love it will eat its fruit. Those that love it Love that, love that talk. Ready? Those uh, who enjoy talking will reap the harvest of their words. There is the law of sowing and reaping. Uh, words are like seeds sown that produce a harvest. When James finishes his discourse on the power of the tongue, he says, Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Wow. Your words today can set a harvest in motion for tomorrow. So here, here's... Here, here's what a lot of a lot of people pray as they walk out of church every Sunday. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Wow. You see, my, I got a question for you. Here's how we're with this question. If you are what you eat. Then what would you eat? What would you be if you ate your words? <laughs> if you are what you eat, what would you be if you ate your words? <laughs> wow. And I'll leave that one alone. I ain't got to add to it. You can think about it. Matter of fact, I hope you think about it. I hope you chew on that. Get it? I hope you chew on that thought. Okay. That's all stand. God is awesome. All the time. This morning, I'm, I'm not going to give a specific offer. I'm just going to say, if you got a need from God, why don't you come in this offer? If you have something said today, tell anybody else, but you heard something today that actually making you think in a different way and, and thinking uh, 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 how God can help you to be better in your life to shorten your trials and to uh, help shorten other people's trials and to lead them in the right way. Whatever. I want you to come and pray. All the will come and pray. Come and pray. Whether it's something that you need or somebody else needs or, or, or you just want to come and thank God.
Amen.